Richard. So, Arco Space War? This isn't Star Wars. What's going on? Well, every now and again, Pete, we get these little messages tagged in it, you know, three, four different people all tagged us in and said, you've got to check this out, you've got to check this out. So I clicked the link expecting to see something that we've seen a thousand times, something that we've talked about multiple times, and my jaw hit the floor. It was absolutely brilliant. I'm absolutely delighted that John Lennon, who had made this find, this new discovery, if you like as well, has agreed to come on and talk about Arco Space War and possibly even more importantly, what it is that he's discovered. So let's cut over that interview now. Well, I'm delighted to be joined by John Lennon from Ireland. So good evening to you, John, and welcome to the Vintage Rebellion podcast. Hiya, Richard. How are you? I'm doing fine, John. So thanks very much for your post, which many people initially thought was an April Fool's post. For those who have not seen it, you posted on the 12 back roof first. So can we just first of all go back to the story that you've got and how did you get these items and what are they before we go into the detail on them? Right, Richard. Well, basically what happened was I have relations in California who assist me a lot and help me out in buying bits and pieces of Star Wars and storing them for me over there and packing them and getting them over here to Ireland because of the cost of shipping large items or multiples. It's just cheaper to send them all in one big box. And they also kind of are fans of Star Wars as well and appreciate what I'm doing and stuff like that and help me out. So basically... They also buy a bit of little bits of silver and f- furniture and antique things, and like a lot of people, they're on um, mailing sites and go to yard sales and picks up what have you. So one of the companies that they're on a mailing list for just sent them out in the kind of newsletter or a spread or whatever, saying they had some Star Wars items coming up for sale. And they messaged me during the night last Thursday, two weeks, I think it was two weeks, two to three weeks ago on, on a Thursday, and said, look, hey. There's one of the people we buy bits and pieces off of on a mailing list from have sent us uh, some images of Star Wars items and are you interested? So I just checked it out and emailed the company and they said that they just listed one 12 back on eBay. So I immediately grabbed it because of the label on the back, which was kind of a blurry image really on eBay and it didn't really mean much. So. On further inspection and investigation, then they said that they would have more if I was interested. And I said, yes, definitely. And they said they would send a link via Dropbox to me to have a look at. So that was kind of a panic. And this was on a Friday. And I had to figure out what Dropbox was because I'm not very tech savvy. And I got that on the phone and Monday couldn't come quick enough. So I immediately got a link on Monday, probably somewhere around 8 o'clock. 8 p.m., which would be kind of noon California time with the images, and that they had taken in a consignment of um, items from a gentleman and his wife that were clearing out their house and going to a smaller property or something, and they wanted to sell these items. And they sent me 24, 25 images, and I immediately jumped in anything that was 12 back with the blue sticker on the back and the equivalent of the knockoffs as well that had the blue sticker on the back. They had post-its with just the prices up on them, which were pretty reasonable, and I was just happy to get them, basically. So describe the blue sticker then for those listeners of ours who haven't got a clue what you're talking about, because blue stickers are not common, but it's this is something that's completely different to anything we've seen before. Yes, well... Blue sticker that's on the back of it, they're all kind of put down the bottom left-hand corner and they would be about a quarter of the size of the card back. And they seem to be evidence tags from a court case involving 20th Century Fox versus Arco Industries Limited. And they show the evidence number and the court case number, I think, and a date stamp for September 1978. And a signature on it, which I think is the court clerk signature, which probably would be the person who receives the item and is in charge of having all the ducks in a row for a court case. So these were on the back of the card backs, and they would have been presented, I suppose, in the court case as 
let's say exhibit A or exhibit B or whatever. Okay, got you. Okay, yeah. so uh, I'm looking at one that has exhibit JJJ. So do they have, I don't know, AAA, BBB, CCC on them? Is that? I actually didn't look at them in total in complete because mm-hmm. I haven't got them in hand currently at the moment because we're still over in California. Yeah. And they're being held there until I have a few items and on, on with this everything that's going on at the moment, you'd be kind of half afraid to ship something because of delays in packaging houses and things of that like, you know. Yeah. So you mentioned Arco there. Now up until yesterday I hadn't got a clue who Arco were. So this company Arco has gone to court. They're the defendant in a case against twentieth century Fox. So what's been the problem then? Which are basically what it was from my research. Now, I have never heard of Arco either, like because I'm over here in Ireland, so I was a simple, straight, palatite, Kenner kind of a guy who that's all I knew of or whatever. And, you know, so I never heard really of Arco either. So on researching it and finding some stuff that Joe Wyatt had put up and some other people had put up, the Arco Industries was a Hong Kong-based toy group. And apparently when... The toys were due for release from Star Wars. Both 20th Century Fox and Lucas were kind of slow and dragging their heels and getting things off the ground. And some other small toy companies kind of jumped on board. And I don't think Arco was the very first, but there was definitely one of the first to make what would you call bootleg replicas, not exact replicas, kind of bootlegs of the Star Wars figures from the movie. And basically based them on Playmobil, Fisher Price, little figures, knockoffs basically, and give them a, a, a laser sword or whatever, and a few bits of other armory. And they were very, very close in features and looks, I suppose, if you wanted to, the characters like Luke Skywalker, Vader, C-3PO, R2-D2, and Luke Skywalker, as I said, and other figures in the range of 12 backs or whatever. And I suppose... 20th Century Fox brought him to court over the fact that they were knocking off the movie's toys, basically, and these apparently were items that were used in the court case. Right. That, I mean, the fact that they exist is just absolutely amazing how they have been kept for so long. Do we know who won the court case? Yes, because I found on a, I found on a, a website there, and I think I attached a picture on the 12 backs as well, that in, you know, there's kind of a date line of Kenner Star Wars history. And I was just scrolling down through and it just said that Californian judge has found in favour of 20th Century Fox versus Arco Toys in a multi in a million dollar lawsuit Ooh. on the date of October 1978. Mm-hmm. So they would tie in with the timeline of these being used as, I think they're stamped 23rd or 28th of September. So I think the decision was on the 24th of October, 1978, of the knockoffs. So that, that was a timeline, and that was when they were probably used in the um, in the court case. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing that, are these just cheap items that you expect to find in a typical pound land today? From, yeah, exactly. There was a, a guy I listened to on YouTube, because I had a couple of days to do this research of what I was finding. So... I was trying to find any kind of court case things on Google or was there anything. So that's, I'm only just basically telling you what I found out that there were basically, yeah, they were sold at five and dimes, I think, or what they call a pound shop nowadays or whatever. They were sold at them like probably for 17, 80 cents a piece, like, you know, just, and I think from one of Joe Wise information pieces that they were kind of like the Woolworths as well, maybe, and the equivalent of them, like, so that's just basically, that's all they were cheap knockoffs that were sold in pound shops and stuff, yeah. Well, you've got to assume then if they've lost a multi-million pound court case, it must have put them out of business. I don't think it is because they had other tie ranges as well. They had different other tie ranges as well. They were selling like cheap cap guns, laser guns. If you look, they were still pretty active up until the 80s. And I think they were bought over by um, Mattel in 85 or 86 from what I could read online. Mm-hmm. So they had other little toy ranges and little space guns and other things that were available to sell. Like, you know, so it wasn't just to weren't Star Wars or Star Kids or whatever focus only. Like, so they had some other income. What's your own personal opinion of these then? I mean, it's, it's different now looking at them as an adult and, and understanding and appreciating them. But have you got one of these as a kid? 
I've never seen him. <laughs> I've never seen him before. And I don't think if I was a kid, I would have bought him <laughs> at the time because I was like, Jesus, they're horrible looking yokes. Like, you know what I mean? But every eye formed its own beauty. You know, um, I remember even looking at the Power of the Force line when they came out and thinking that these were knockoffs because you had a hand that looked like a bodybuilder. You had everything that was totally out of scale. And it's only when you turned them around and actually saw that the figures were on the back that they actually looked as if they were, you know, Kenner or Palatite produced. So these were totally, you know, I'd never seen anything like them, to be honest, with you, over here anyway. And I wouldn't have bought them as a it looks as though that there's an R2-D2, Chewbacca, Luke Skywalker, Stormtrooper, Darth Vader and C-3PO. So it looks as though there's six in the set. So did you manage to get all six and the 12 back? No, I got four. I mm-hmm. got um, Chewbacca, R2-D2, C-3PO and, and the Stormtrooper right. and their Arco equivalents. Brilliant. Available was a Darth Vader 12 back and his Arco equivalent, but they had no label on the back. Mm-hmm that they were tagged or whatever. So I didn't see any connection in buying them. And, you know, I just left them there, to be honest about it. Now, I did receive an email today because I've been looking for, what do they call it, Providence or whatever on this. And the person said that we're dealing with an elderly couple and they're not very computer literate and they dropped us in the items and we have emailed them and we're hoping to get you some Providence on us. But they are from source, you wanted to say to me today, in the agency that's selling them for me. Like, And it's obvious. Like, I mean, I didn't pay. They weren't advertised as, wow, look at these. These were X, Y, Z. They were advertised just as Star Wars ties and whatever. Mm-hmm. So they weren't looking for a huge money for them. And the truth be told, I paid kind of just a little under, probably a little under market value of the 12 backs that they are. And some of you see have, you know, bent ears and ding on bubbles and things like that, which would be, you know, so I paid probably under market value even for what they are for them, like, you know, so. Looking at the four that you mentioned then, I think two of them are so close, I can get it. So the C-3PO to me reminds me of that droid from Spaceballs, which I don't know the name of it. And the Stormtrooper, I get that one as well. But I think the Chewbacca and the Auto do I don't think them two would have really caused much of an issue in court. I think the Chewbacca has kind of a gorilla-looking face. Yeah, Planet of the Apes, possibly. Yeah, more Planet of the Apes, but I suppose as he was re- as he was released as a star kid. Yeah, it's the fun whatever they were called. You know, it's it's enough of a yeah, it's enough <laughs> of a kind of a, a tie to it that um, it would stand up in court, I suppose. Like, and the R two D two was more like the the little Playmobil figure, I think, yeah. with the two arms and yeah. stuff like that as well. But look, you you know where it's coming from. <laughs> I think the Luke Skywalker as well in that range was a little blondie figure as well with some sores and things. It does, but yeah, it's the it's the lightsabers in the pockets that probably can't yeah, end at yeah. all. <laughs> yeah. Those are, these are absolutely fantastic items. These. How do these fit in with your collection? Then I mean, I'm I'm guessing you're not a bootleg collector as such, but uh, so w- what's your plans to display these? What are you going to do? That's a good question. Basically, the plan to display them is, I don't know, we've all gone through the collection of, I want this, I want mm-hmm. that, I want everything, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that. And then you get it all and you go, well, you know what, I have no emotional ties to X, Y, Z. I had a full collection, of full 12 back run, and I had, you know, Power to Force runs, and I had tri logos and stuff. And I've gone back now to kind of like a mint, if I can at all, Return of the Jedi run, and the tri logos that I like, and... I got rid of 12 backs because I had no real emotional tie to them. So I have these now, but I like to have quirky little things too in my collection. And I think these will fit in just perfectly because they're unique. You know, there's not, there's loads of 12 backs out there, but there's none of them with the actual labels on them or such. So they are unique. But if I ever do decide to sell them, there's probably about 10 guys have gone touch me to, to sell them, but I would rather sell them sometime if needs be to a focus collector for something like this. And, there's not many people that would be focus collectors for something like this. Like, So you know who you are, really, if I do decide to let it sell. But I have no intention of anything at the moment because I like to have something kind of unusual or quirky or different in, in there if I can, you know. Well, it's great that you've shared those pictures. Has anybody from the Star Wars Collectors Archive been in touch to see if they can get some high-quality scans or anything? Because that would be great to have those on the archive for everybody to see in future. No, but any help I can be if anything, there's no problem. Mm-hmm. The pictures I put up were quickly sent by, because I just, you know, get a message in the morning or whatever if I wake up. Hey, John, stuff arrives here. Here's a quick picture of it. Everything looks okay. Or there's a, 
you know, check the bubbles or packaging was good or whatever. So I've only got quick pictures of them items. Mm-hmm. Currently, that's what I put up. So down the line, if anybody wants pictures or whatever, I definitely can. And I'm hoping to get that letter as well, you know, uh, Providence or whatever you call it, to just to back it up. But I just, I'm not out to sell them, to try and make a fortune on them. So to me, with the labels on them, they're 100% unique, like, you know, because why would somebody replicate something like that or try to forge off something without wanting to charge big money for them or anything, you know? And I have no intention of selling them. And if I did they would go to a focus collector for what I paid for them, yeah. you know. Awesome stuff. Just out of interest, did you get anybody contacting you asking if it was an April Fool? About two or three people, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I tell you, I don't think anybody at the moment knows whether it's the 2nd of April or the 15th of July or uh, it, it, could be, it could be Christmas week for all people yeah. know at the moment because it's like a Groundhog Day. We get up, we go to the fridge, we'll eat something, we'll go back to do what we're doing, you know. Everybody's in that situation at the moment. I never even thought of it like the April Fool's Day, like, you know, and people, four or five people actually did message me and say, you know, is this a piss take or whatever? And I was like, no, no, these are actually genuine. I, for, I forgot what day it was, <laughs> you know, so... Well, that's a br- it's a brilliant story, John. Thanks for sharing. I mean, w- w- I know that the guys from the Kivecast, I know they're going to have Joe Y on and uh, John Alvarez, who are two of the huge bootleg collectors, and they're going to yes. discuss our core um, in quite a lot of detail. But, but many thanks for showing up the rest of it, and uh, I'm really pleased that you've come on our show. I know we're going to get a lot of feedback from our listeners. Are you happy us sharing the images that you've put on Facebook? Yeah, on no our problem. I have no problem sharing them away. Yeah, brilliant. I mean... Just basically, if you're looking for any more or whatever I can do for you, there's no problem at any time. Like, I'm yeah. not a professional photographer, but I can I can do what I can and share away. And look, the more people that know about these things and have interest in this, they might find something else down the line that could help them. Like, you know, I'd pass them off. If I saw these things in a, a yard sale or in a car boot sale, I'd pass them off. I wouldn't even dream of it. Like, now mm-hmm. I'm, I know what they are about or whatever. So it's a great help. But any help in the collecting community... In, people are made wiser, it's all the better, you know? Yeah. Well, many thanks for coming on our show, John, and uh, take care and all the best. Thank you, Richard. So there you go, guys. Wow, that's absolutely brilliant. Charge John for that. The website that we talked about there is Joe Wise website, outerrealmmsw.com. And if you click that you will see that there are lots and lots and lots of bootleg links at the top of it. Now, I'm sure Joe Y and John Alvarez will probably record a Kivecast episode at some point very soon discussing Argo Space War, but I'm just going to want to briefly cover the introduction that Joe has written at the top of the page there. And uh, guys, I'm just going to ask you some questions about some of the items as we scroll down. So, Joe's put on there, Arco Toys out of Westbury, New York, were there and on the shelf in early 1978, producing the Space War line of knockoff Star Wars toys. Taking advantage of Kenner's slow response to the overwhelming demand for Star Wars toys, I think one or two collectors may take some umbrage to Kenner's slow response because they've argued for a long time that Kenner actually weren't really that slow and could only do their best. The Arco Space War line was an offshoot of the Play Kid line, which was very similar to Playmobil, Agram Boys, and Fisher Price Adventure People lines. The Space War line was available in many retail outlets for America, especially five and dime stores, the 70s equivalent of dollar stores, as well as Woolworths and Kmart. The six Space War figures retailed for just under a dollar each. The human character, most commonly considered to be Luke, in the Space War line is the only one available on both a Play Kid header card as well as a Space War card, and both are extremely rare. The other ma- major variation on this line's packaging was that at the time, retail giant Woolworth had Arco send them their version of the Space War line with a slightly altered card. Gone was the die cut detailing and the addition of the Woolworth logo at the bottom of the card to distinguish the product for their stores. The Woolworth versions are ultra rare, and in fact some figures have yet to public surface on a Woolworth card, although they were produced. So far, no examples of certain figures are known to have survived. And then, Joe has taken lots and lots of photographs of different play kids and the variations shown the Woolworths and the not Woolworths, pre-production items, uh, multi-packs, uh, sets that went with them. So. Firstly, generally, I want to come to you, Pete, first, because I think some of these 
scream Pete at me, okay? Just generally, what's your thoughts on the Arco Space War range? Uh, slightly mad, Rich, but I can see, yeah, there's definitely Star Wars influences there. I love that they just gone for a, a, just a straight monkey for the Chewbacca kind of version. So I just put a monkey in there. It's Planet of the Apes, that isn't it? <laughs> well, a little bit, but there's, there's, you can just you can just see where these things have been influenced by. You know, you've got an R two D two kind of thing. You've got a well, what's that? A stormtrooper looking thing? Yeah, I guess a stormtrooper looking thing. Uh, the hero, he he looks a little bit plain for me. That's a little bit boring. But Darth Vader, oh crikey, I would have had him in any kind of play. It'd, it'd have it'd have it'd have done all really nasty. He's got what's he got? He's got a mechanical arm, an extra one, a space gun, a space sword, obviously, and he's got some kind of shield. I mean, he wasn't having the force, was he? He was just going to bat people away with his shield. They are go back to the stormtrooper then. Tell us about the storm. What the stormtrooper comes with. Uh, oh, he's got a TV walkie-talkie, a TV camera, a TV camera, <laughs> a mechanical <laughs> camera, space gun. So if he doesn't like the t- first take, he's going to shoot you or <laughs> smash you in the face with his mechanical arm. Yeah, so does R2D. They do have a TV camera as well, mind. So <laughs> at least he does record, I suppose. Where's that? Why, what's that all about? <laughs> Is that even explained anywhere? <laughs> I need to know. I need to know why he's got a TV camera. Mm. Andy Spoons and so I mean I don't know how much you know about this line, but can we just? I mean obviously uh, John talked about these characters in in a bit of detail, but can you just scroll down a little bit and have a look at some of the the multi packs that's underneath? I mean, just it's amazing to think that these multi packs even if it existed, um, considering you know these are so cheap. And I think there's one of the sets has like four Luke figures <laughs> included in it. I mean, it's just bonkers. Well, I'm looking at, I've never, never heard of these, never seen these before now. And I must say, if it wasn't called Space War, the, the Star Wars resemblance, apart from the space swords, is pretty tenuous. And I can't, I wonder why Kenner went after them so, so much when you when you think of the kind of r2d2 character that playmobil did you know that's just as that's probably more like r2d2 than the than the play kid one i mean he's got art he's got proper sort of human arms and a lightsaber and a tv camera that is not r2d2 the only um i'd say the only pack that you would kind of just look at straight away and think, right, I can see the influence is the is the unproduced mock up that Joe's put there, where there's clearly a, actually the picture on the top looks like C three PO, a stormtrooper, and a monkey. And until God, was it you or Pete just a moment ago saying that's Chewbacca, that hadn't actually even crossed my mind. I just thought, why is it why is a monkey <laughs> hanging out with a with a stormtrooper? The the space sets with all the Luke Skywalkers just look like you know, it's called Space Set. It's got two blonde-haired characters in spacesuits. The, it's pretty tenuous, really, that, that Star Wars link. Boo Kenner, well, how mean. You know, these are great These are great toys. You're you booing Kenner, but it wasn't Kenner, it was Fox. Oh, okay, Boo Fox. <laughs> <laughs> but boo if you look, Spoon's more like. Boo Spoon, Come yeah. On. <laughs> but if you go, go back to C-3PO. Can, you can't tell me that that C-3PO is not the Doc Matrix out of Spaceballs. <laughs> yes, is it with the hairstyle as well? <laughs> yeah, but then, but it's more, it's more the picture on the card looks like Star Wars, while the while the toy, it's even a different colour, isn't it? You kind of the, a nice gold figure at the top of the card. It's, it's the good. font as well they've used. I mean, Space Wars clearly yeah. in a kind of Star Wars kind of font. You know, you've got that, in, and the fact it comes with the space sword. I mean, where else did you see space swords, or laser swords, and things? Yeah. It's, I, 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 that's what I said to John, you know, they might have got away with the R2-D2, they may have got away with Luke even. The C-3PO and the Darth Vader must have absolutely nailed it for them. But even then, are, are you aware of Ideal Toys, mm-hmm. 12-inch range, Night of Darkness, I can't remember what the C-3PO was called, but they weren't, they weren't sued by anyone, were they? It's, uh, just, just got away with it. I don't know, don't know, maybe they were just fed up of, you know, enough people did this, and it was just unfortunate 
for Arco that they were the the ones that you know kind of enough's enough let's sue this lot and get them to stop and maybe the, the, we'll see the end of these bootlegs little did they know I suppose <laughs> no, possibly because they were one of the first ones as well obviously I mean if they were out in 78 very very early in 78 they must have been one of the you know the first to rush these toys out um, I I Ide- ideal were about 78 as well were they, were they that yeah because they, they were trying to yeah they're trying to cash in before anybody else was doing the toys it's kind of we haven't got the license but we'll we'll bung these out i'm fairly fairly sure of that anyway they seem to go very nasa as it gets as the line matures mm. <laughs> they've got a nasa command base on the moon and they've gone yeah well we've kind of gone gone a bit well we've kind of messed that up let's just turn it to nasa and get away with it i wonder if nasa had anything to say about that <laughs> <laughs> And Andy Preston, then, so right at the bottom, there's a range of, you know, guns with um, sticky dots at the end of it. Do any of those kind of look a little bit suspicious? A little bit too much likeness in them? Yeah, not really. I mean, the, there's, there's some of the guns um, that are carded. There's something that looks a little bit like TIE Fighters, maybe, in the background. But, uh, no, it's more generic sort of spaceships and more UFOs and things. There's nothing in there that really screams... Star Wars. I mean, uh, again, at the very bottom of the web page there, you've got a sparking space pistol. I remember having something like that as a kid. There was a, a little chamber inside and must have had a flint and steel. So when you pull the trigger, they rub against each other and create sparks in the barrel. If you squint and look at it sideways, it might just resemble a Stormtrooper blaster, maybe. But uh, no, more sort of general space toys, the sort of thing you could pick up, I guess, in any toy shop anywhere in the 70s and 80s. Anyway, cheers, John, and cheers as well to Joe Y for putting all this information out there, and certainly check out the Kai cast when they release that. The moon with the Rebel base will be in range in 30 minutes. 